In this video, you're going to learn about the different layers of Earth's interior and their unique properties. You will also learn how to read and interpret the information on page number 10 of the Earth Science Reference Table. What you might not have realized is, beneath the surface that we walk on, Earth is made up of different layers. And it's really hard for us to imagine this because humans, and not even machines, can get past the outermost layer, which is called the crust. But there's so much to Earth's interior that we need to learn about. This diagram is a representation of all the layers of the Earth. What we're going to be using is this diagram here, which is located at the top of page 10 of the Earth Science Reference Table. The first thing we're going to focus on is Earth's crust. So in the reference table, you first need to locate the label for the crust, and then it's pointing to something very specific. It's pointing to a really thin black bolded line. Now I'm going to outline that here in orange so you can see that that part only is the crust. The crust is a really thin layer and it's so much smaller than the rest of the layers of Earth's interior. What's incredible is as small as the crust is compared to the other layers, we can't even break through the crust to get to the next layer. So that just shows you how deep Earth's interior really is compared to Earth's crust. What we also need to know is that there's two types of crust. You can have continental crust, which is what the continents are made up of, and you also have ocean crust, which is what the ocean floor is made up of. We often forget that the bottom of the ocean floor cons consists of rocks, which are also considered to be part of Earth's crust. Now we need to be able to know the difference between continental and oceanic crust. So the first main difference which we can find on the reference table which I had highlighted in blue is that the continental crust has a lower density of about 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. On the other hand, the oceanic crust has a higher density at about 3 grams per centimeter cubed. The continental crust is composed of the igneous rock granite, while the ocean crust is composed of the igneous rock basalt. Now this can help us understand why there's different densities for the crust. If you remember, igneous rock granite is considered to be a felsic igneous rock, and felsic rocks have a lower density. Basalt is a mafic igneous rock, and those igneous rocks have a higher density. There's one more property that's different between the continental and oceanic crust, and that's their thickness. So if we look at the continental crust, which again consists of the crust that makes up our continents, it's much thicker compared to the oceanic crust. So continental crust is considered to be thick, while the ocean crust is considered to be thinner. So the next layer that we need to focus on is called the lithosphere. Now the lithosphere is a little unique because the lithosphere is made up of two different parts of Earth's interior. The first part of the lithosphere is the crust, which we already learned about before. The next part of the lithosphere is called the rigid mantle, which we have highlighted there in green. So those two together make up the lithosphere. And what you'll learn towards the end of the unit is that the lithosphere is what um, the tectonic plates are made up of. So Earth is made up of uh, broken up into all these different tectonic plates, and those are the lithosphere part of Earth's interior. The next layer we're going to focus on is called the asthenosphere, and that's the layer we have highlighted here in yellow. Now the asthenosphere is so important to Earth, and it's also a little bit complicated to understand because the asthenosphere has a nickname called plastic mantle, and the reason it's called plastic is because it is a solid, just like plastic is, but the material inside the asthenosphere can flow like a liquid. So think about a plastic water bottle that you drink out of. You can squeeze the plastic, you can bend it, you can move plastic. It's solid, but you can still move it. It's still flexible. It can still flow. And that's exactly what happens to the material inside of the mantle of specifically the asthenosphere, that material can move. And what I have highlighted here in red are what we call the convection currents. Remember with convection, you have warm materials rising and cold materials sinking. 
This causes the convection current, which allows the material inside the mantle to move, which is ultimately the reason why the tectonic plates also move across the Earth, but stay tuned for that later on in the unit. The next layer is called the stiffer mantle, which is significantly thicker than the layers that we just learned about previously. What I also want to point out is that you can get information about the density of these layers. So the density of the stiffer mantle can be anywhere between 3.4 to 5.6 grams per centimeter cubed. The next layer is the outer core highlighted here, and it's important to note that the outer core consists of iron and nickel, but it's liquid iron and nickel. So think of melted down metal. When many people think of liquid, they automatically think water. It's not water in the outer core, it's iron and nickel, but it's melted down in the liquid state. Now the density of the outer core can be anywhere from 9.9 .9 to 12.2 grams per centimeter cubed. Finally, the innermost layer is the inner core, which also contains iron and nickel, but this layer is solid iron and nickel, and it has the greatest density of anywhere from 12.8 to 13.1 grams per centimeter cubed. Now we need to be able to use the top part of the page 10 of the reference table, which contains all the layers and their names, and see how we can use the rest of the page of the reference table, which includes graphs where you can find about the depth, temperature, and pressure of each layer inside of the Earth. What we first need to realize is within the graphs for pressure and temperature, the layers are all separated by these dashed lines. So it's not the solid lines on the, on the graph, it's those dashed lines that separate each of the layers inside the Earth. So now what we're going to do is color code the layers so that you can see how the top part of the chart flows and works with the bottom part of page 10 of the reference table. I highly recommend if you have access to colored pencils to do this to your own reference table because it's going to be a lot easier for you to use this chart to answer questions if you have the color coding in place. So first we have our crust and our lithosphere, that really thin layer here shown in pink. The next is the asthenosphere, stiffer mantle, outer core, and then inner core. So note that all of the information from the top part of the reference table, which has the names of the layers, also flows and works with the bottom part of the reference table. So there's information where you can get about pressure, and the units for pressure here are a million atmospheres. And we have our data line here highlighted in yellow, and that's where you would go to get information from this specific graph. On the bottom part, we have temperature, and the units are degrees Celsius. And we're going to also highlight the data line, which is where you're going to go to get information for temperature. At the bottom, both of these graphs share one x-axis, which is depth in kilometers, so how deep these layers are. And going from the crust all the way to the inner core, the depth increases as you, of course, go through each layer. So now I want to walk you through some example questions just so you can see the type of questions that you'll be asked about this diagram. I'm leaving the layers color coded just to help visualize this process a little bit easier. So our first question is which layer of Earth's interior has a depth of 4,500 kilometers? So your first step is to locate the depth on the x-axis and find where 4,500 kilometers would be. Once you locate that, you're going to bring that up to the top part of the chart to see which layer this depth is a part of. And you'll find out that a depth of 4,500 kilometers means that you're in the outer core. Another question, it's going to have two things in one. What is the temperature and pressure of Earth's interior at a depth of 1,000 kilometers? So what we know is that the depth is 1,000 kilometers. So your first step is to locate that, that depth. Then at that point on the x-axis, you're going to take that up to the temperature line and stop when you intersect the data line. Look over to the temperature axis, and you're going to estimate here 
the temperature can be about 3,100 degrees Celsius. To get pressure, you do the same thing, but you bring it up to the pressure line. You look over to the y-axis, and again, we need to estimate. So again, good answers could be the temperature is about 3,100 degrees Celsius, and pressure is 0 0.25 million atmospheres. Another example question is, at what depth does the outer core begin? So you need to start at the top part of the chart and locate the beginning of the outer core. Once you do that, you're going to take that down all the way to depth at the bottom, and you're going to see that this begins just slightly before the 3,000 kilometer mark. So I think a really strong answer would be 2,900 kilometers, because it's not exactly at the 3,000 mark. Example question four is what is the temperature at the mantle outer core boundary? So we need to locate where this is in the top part of the reference table. You find where the mantle and outer core meet and you bring that point down to the temperature graph and stop when you intersect the data line. At that point, you're going to look over to the y axis and you're going to see that a temperature at this point is about 5000 degrees Celsius. Now, one last question here. What is a probable density of the outer core? So you locate the outer core, and then you look over to the density options, and when you give an answer here, you can give me any number between 9.9 .9 and 12.2 grams per centimeter cubed. Just give one value, but it can be any value between those two numbers. If you have any questions using this page of the reference table, please do not hesitate to reach out.